You're listening to the Slavic Literature Pod, your shelf help guide to all things Slavic. I'm Cameron Lalana. And I am Mac Harris Mimich. And today we're covering part one, chapter 22 of Grassili Gross. Vasily Grossman's Life and Fate Read Along, uh, moving on from uh, Dementi Gitmanov's little party to celebrate his going away uh, to become a commissar for a tank corps under our friend Colonel Novikov. And we have a quiet moment uh, with his wife and children before he leaves in an interesting um, change of setting from the last part. Is there anywhere in particular that you would like to start? Yes, there is. And thank you for asking. There is... A couple things in this chapter. I think the first and most obvious one was the one that was outlined in our our post this morning, just talking about um, kind of the relationship of the individual to the state. And we've examined a lot of different types of people so far. Uh, I mean, we've, I would say, more or less been focused on sort of more everyday people. And here we get someone who is quite high up in the party comparatively and this is is a much different look at what that life is like and it sounds hard to kind of conceptualize it in this way because we probably often think well they had many more benefits life was easier life was better and it definitely was but this chapter also shows us that there is a little bit of a drawback you know to some degree um the sense, this overwhelmingly pervading sense that although Getmanov has this sort of control over everyone in his life, he really has no control over himself. And in that same way, he's he's kind of constricted similarly to some of the other people that are depicted in the book. It's not really the same as like, you know, being being in a prisoner of war camp. It's not that same kind of constriction. I don't think anyone's make that argument, but there's a, this, there are similar elements that everybody has, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think when we talk about going back to the last chapter for a moment, I, it's not a particularly novel at this point uh, point to make that having to, to like delete your own self identity in order to uh, subsume yourself to the party, uh, like that's a bad thing. That's just making that point itself is not a newer novel point. Uh, however, Grossman, uh, you know, as ever, is interested in engaging with the human. And so not only do we have uh, Dementi as this figure of, here's what it's like to be a party, to, such a party apparatchik, so, so full of party nos that you uh, sublimate your whole self to the party, but also what is it like to live that way? And as you've said, it comes with these deep set of restrictions on how you can act and think and feel even in those private moments, not as like a, ooh, isn't the party scary, but as a very material, like this is the stressor of obligation and specifically the obligations in the Soviet system here. These are those specific uh, stressors, those specific obligations. Yeah, and we'll see for you to decide uh, how you feel on it, but... I would say the this chapter and tomorrow and maybe the day after they form a, an interesting bureaucratic pair or trio. Uh, given of before he leaves, he gives his wife a series of things. You know, if you're if you're sick, if you need to travel, if you need this, if you need that, this is who you call. This is where you send it. This is how it goes. He's extremely well connected. He can resolve issues before they've even come up, and in. The next chapter, we're going to talk a little bit about Jenya trying to get her residency permit uh, while she's just try, trying to work and be helpful and struggles to do that. And so we'll see the kind of contrast between these two, which is uh, profoundly different and explained over a profoundly different amount of pages, I would say. Right. I also wanted to bring in uh, a comment from a Discord user, Leia, uh, who yesterday very astutely, I think, zoomed in on that interesting relationship of these uh, party men and their children, which really comes to the fore in this chapter. And, and Leia today writes, 
This chapter reminded me of the beginning of Stalingrad, where Vavilov is saying goodbye to his family. Vavilov is a peasant, as a reminder. Well, like he's a, he's a collective farm worker, but you know, like the closest you can get to be a peasant now in the Soviet Union. Sentimentality is completely absent in that scene. Vavilov is concerned with providing for his family to the extent that he can, knowing his absence will nonetheless make things very difficult for them. Getmanov is setting things up for his family as well, as well. But we see a difference in action versus feeling. Getmanov is overwhelmed by his emotions, even though everyone will be well cared for. I don't know if this was his intention, but Grossman shows how someone in Getmanov's position is consistently placed in an unsustainable emotional state, yet he is critical, I think. Sentimentality, this, quote, limitless tenderness and love, end quote, is certainly a product of this turmoil, but it is also a privilege. I think this is an interesting point, and I think part of it does have to do probably a little bit with the way that Stalingrad was written and constructed, just with a little bit less nuance overall. And this Vavilov character in there, you know, at the time that it was written and everything probably wasn't going to have that sort of sentimental kind of tinge to his character uh, that Gebenov has. And I, I would also say it's kind of, I don't know, Gebenov has more responsibility in society. Vavilov kind of gets to just play this sort of sacrificial figure. I mean, doesn't he, well, whatever. It's not relevant, his actual, you know, sacrifice of life, right? He's really just gives up his his family and goes off and, and fights. Whereas, I don't know, Gebenov, he has he has more going on as opposed to just, He's not just working on a farm. Like he does a lot of other things. His his obligation to the state, I think, is is much larger. The the amount of things that he is theoretically um, in control of, and that brings out a, a different side of him that Vavilov does not necessarily need to have in order to fulfill his role. Is kind of what I'm getting at. And so, um, it is interesting that it's written without that sentimentality in Stalingrad. But I think that this probably is a more realistic picture of what people felt on this sort of uh, dichotomy between uh, duty and self. And it's it's pretty, I don't know, it's pretty compelling in just uh, one page, one and a half pages. That's all I had to say. This is a, this is a pretty short chapter. Indeed. We have a, a little bit of a longer one tomorrow. So all you eager readers who are trying to get more than one page a day, you'll finally have it. <laughs> so you have something to look forward to. Well... In that case, you'll hear from us again soon. Bye.